Hello, folks. Welcome back to Light Source and Gravy. My name is Patrick, your host as usual, and today I have hopefully a fun video for you. Now it's time to whip out the belt. Now you're not in trouble. I'm not going to beat you like a jaywalker in Singapore. That's not going to happen. We are going to engrave this belt on the Lasermatic Mark II, not the extra wide, just the regular. I will be using the jig table, but it can also be done with the honeycomb. So you should be able to figure out a way to do this with the jig table or with the honeycomb. Now, first I'm gonna tell you what I did with the belt. I measured from this point at this rivet to the first hole. I marked the center with a silver grease pencil Okay, then I went out from the center and marked the shape of my engraving. So the total width, put it here. And that way I'll be able to use these marks to frame the laser and make sure it's lined up and centered. So how did I do this? Well, let's head over to the Lasermatic and I'll show you. I have it right here behind me. And as you can see, I have the jig table set up. And what you'll need if you have the jig table is some longer M4 screws. So with the longer screws, we're gonna be able to use these jig bars to hold the belt down. Now, let me show you the trick. The trick that I'm using to hold this belt down is that we are not going to place these jig bars right side up. So the jig bars will not have the post. As you can see, they have the posts on them. The posts will actually be facing up instead of down. And then we're going to use the back of the jig bar to hold the belt down and keep it taut across the surface of the jig table. So let me get that set up real quick for you and you'll see how it looks. So what I did is I started the two screws. So then all I have to do is slide the belt underneath. And what I did is I just let this side hang down. I kind of tucked it under the jig table. And I did the same thing for this side. Just pop this up. Slide it right under. Now we have our belt on the laser mat. Then we can start to line it up and get the center of the belt. The center of the jig table. Turned on some more lights. So here's the center of the jig table. Here's my center mark on the belt. So what I want to do is keep that center mark there and shove this belt down. Point where it stays tight. Just like that. It's centered up. Tighten your screw down. holding pretty solid, so let's get the back one. I just used the holes in the jig table to line the belt up and make sure that it is straight all the way down. And then it also rests up against the screw. So that way I know it's being held up to that set point. All right, I 
just lined the belt up on the screws on the jig table uh, to tighten down. Kind of shimmied it to where it is laying perfectly straight down the center of the jig table. And now we can start working on our graphic and get it ready now that our belt is locked in place. Today I'm going to be doing the US flag on this belt. So I just need to cut out this shape. If you want to learn how to make a flag, I will leave a link in the description and I have a video showing you how to make a flag from scratch in Lightburn. It's not difficult. You'll be able to learn how to do it in no time. So I already have this flag shape here. So what I want to do is make sure all these are grouped and they're not. Now that they're grouped, I can select the flag. Then I'm going to select my template, which is my toolpath. I'm going to shift click that. Hold on a second. All right, click the flag first and shift click the template. Then I go to laser go to tools, cut shapes, and we don't need this outside shape. So there are now two shapes. So the outside shape, we can move out of the way. We'll see, that's what our belt engrave will look like. And you just have to determine if that's the look you wanna go with or not. If it's not, let's just put this back uh, as one whole piece. See, we got, nope, still two pieces. There we go, now we're back to one whole piece. Let's say we wanna make sure we get some stripe additional stripes in there so we can go with one layer of stars and then we'll get a stripe on top and stripe on the bottom or if we wanted to go with all stars we could do this and have stripes it's just up to you whatever you prefer just line it up how you like it I'm thinking maybe all stars would look pretty cool so let's go with that So flag selected, shift click the template, tools, cut shapes, and then we can delete the outer ones. And that is what we would be engraving. That kind of reminds me of a tuning fork. I really don't like that look. So let's go back to two shapes again. Let's try with the one layer of stars. All right, now we can shift click on the template, tools, cut shapes, delete the outer one. None of these are really making it so I want to cut it out and do it. Let's see. Oops. All right, let's move this back over. I'm gonna go between the stars, that way I make sure I get a whole star. Let's try this. Tools, cut shapes, delete the outer one. I think it'll just go with that. I think that it kind of makes sense. Yeah, I think I might squeeze this flag up just a little bit. It's on the belt, they're not gonna notice that. That way I can get a second layer of stars in there, hopefully. At least almost a second layer. All right, let's try that. 
it's really up to you. You can do whatever you want with this. All right, I'm not gonna adjust anymore. Let's just go with that. You get to see the second layer of stars kind of there. Now, I did something that I wanted to point out. I deleted my template, so how am I gonna frame? Well, let's just go back. Grab only our template and control D to make a duplicate. So now we can select the first shape, select one of the templates, and then go to tools, cut shapes, then delete that, and we still have our template here. So that's the easy way to make sure you don't lose your template. Now let's turn on the laser matic and get this thing framed up. All right, we're back here in Lightburn. I have the settings pulled up for you. We're gonna go really fast with a lot of power with the Lasermatic Mark II 30 watt. I want an embossed look, not a brown or dark burnt look. So this is gonna give it a nice embossed look by running at a speed of 20,000, power of 95%. We are gonna run air. Line interval is 0 0.08, and we're gonna fill all shapes at once. This is gonna run at a zero degree angle, so it'll just go back and forth across the belt from top to bottom, or bottom to top, however you look at it. And then it will be complete. And once it's complete, I will take it to the sink, rinse it off, give it a little bit of time to dry, and then come back and show you the result. I'll show you the result also as soon as it comes off the laser. That way you can see what just rinsing it off with water will do. Now, some people ask if I wet this leather before I engrave it, like I normally do all my other leather. Um, I chose not to wet this leather because I was wanted it to get, hopefully burn a little deeper. And I just wanted to see how it would look without wetting it. And the belt lays down fine, everything looks good. So from my first test, it looked great. So I decided not to wet this one and why mess with something that I know already works. All right, so let's get this job started. Fume extraction is on. We are ready to go. We're looking at about a 20 minute burn. I will fast forward this part of the video and I'll see you in just a few seconds. Okay, here it is, fresh off the laser. It looks all black and sooty, but it is not gonna look like that once I rinse it off. So I'll be right back. All right, and we're back. Belt is still a little damp. But I was excited to show it to you. So here we go. That's our kind of embossed look without the dark mark. It does look really good I'm happy with that what do you guys think not bad still a little damp but it'll dry out 
and lighten up as it dries. But overall, I am very happy with this. Might not be the perfect design, but you get the point of you can engrave a belt with a diode laser and with your lasermatic. Just use some creativity and how you fix your belt to your honeycomb or your bed. And you can make one too. Now, I have typed in a number in Lightburn, took a screenshot of that while the job was running. That number is going to be the winning number. So if you go in the comments and you leave a number between one and 1,000, it's between one and 1,000, the closest without going over will get this belt sent to them. Closest without going over, number between one and 1,000 will win this belt. It is a size 36, I believe. I did write it down. Yeah, size 36 belt. So number between one and 1,000, closest without going over, you will win this belt. I'll send it to you at no charge. I'll leave this giveaway going for two weeks, four weeks. It doesn't really matter. I've already picked the number, so it's going to be a game of chance and how good your guess is anyway. But the number has been decided. One last look at it. Thank you all for tuning in. I hope you learned something and had a little fun with this video. If you want to see more videos, leave a comment below and let me know what you want to see. Give me some ideas. Ideas of what you're looking for will help me decide what the next video is going to be. And thank you patrons for supporting me and allowing me to buy these the material for testing. I greatly appreciate you. Thank you, channel members. You are also supporting me as well, and I greatly thank you. I appreciate it. And most importantly, everyone, have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.